Well, Razorback fans, it's a what if Wednesday, and today's question what if Arkansas's defense actually becomes elite in 2023? Let's talk about it here on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday as it is a what if Wednesday here on the show. So we're going to have some fun with that, getting ready for fall camp starting up. And uh, it's amazing that we're already to the point to where July's almost over with. Um, but uh, it's also very warm outside, so it feels like July. But either way, it's, uh, it's going to be fun to talk about a few things today that we'll dive into. And first off, I think that uh, a lot of you who have chimed in on maybe some of the topics that you want me to discuss on the podcast, I try to get to all of them that I can. Some of them I can't, uh, or some of them that are uh, pretty difficult to you know, do or maybe have saved for another time. So if, if you don't hear about it, like somebody asking me, hey, do this on your next podcast, and they don't do it. Don't get mad. I get frustrated. It's just I might be able to still do it. It's just a matter of timing and structure and all that fun stuff. So don't be disheartened. Keep those topics and those ideas coming because I always appreciate to hearing back from the listeners of what they want to know about. But today, uh, I wanted to do a What If Wednesday dealing with the Razorback defense because so many times we have talked about KJ Jefferson. We've talked about win-loss records. We've talked about uh, the schedule. Like we, We've talked about so many things about Arkansas football, and that's really all it's been has been talking season, which is fair. It's what happens when you're around this time of year. But it's always been about the defense just being assumed that it's going to get better. You know, like they were really bad last season. We all know that. And the defense doesn't really have anybody looking at it and say, okay, this is why it's going to get better, or this is how good it's going to be. It's just a matter of eh, it'll get better. Because it can't get much worse. So let's look at the ultimate optimistic viewpoint of what could happen with this Razorback defense. Like, what if the Razorback defense, this upcoming football season, was elite? And when I refer to it as elite, I'm talking about top three to four. I even throw in top five. Top five defense in the SEC. Because if you're a top five defense in the SEC, to me, you're a top 20 defense in the country, maybe even the top 10 defense in the country. And if you do that, you are considered elite. So let's think about it and approach it that way. What if Arkansas defense was elite? Well, they would be the biggest jump, I would think, in the history of Razorback sports when it comes from rankings, whether it's going from worst to first or first to worst. In this particular case, we've mentioned that Arkansas had the worst pass defense in the country. But looking at the stats from last year, and just looking at total defense, this is from this last season, Arkansas was 124th in total defense this past season. My goodness. It really puts it into perspective when you see it. Uh, they had 936 plays against them. They gave up 6,047 yards. So on average, they gave up Oh my gosh. On average, they gave up six and a half yards per play with the defense gave up. Six and a half yards per play. Mm, it's still awful. Uh, had 50 touchdowns scored, uh, or offense, Arkansas's offense scored 50 touchdowns, and the opposing team scored 51 touchdowns. So honestly, it was uh, pretty even there. But when it came to yardage per game, Arkansas was also giving up 465 yards per game. The only teams that had worse defenses than Arkansas this past season, Arizona, Louisiana Tech, Kansas, team Arkansas beat in the Liberty Bowl, Charlotte, Georgia Southern, Colorado, and South Florida. Now, some of you may see, wait a minute, South Florida, isn't that where the defense coordinator came from uh, that Arkansas has now? Yeah, he wasn't a, uh, he was a different little deal, but yeah, came from that. And uh, also Kansas, a team that Arkansas beat, was one of the worst defenses. Like, there's a lot of connections there, and teams had to change coaches for whatever reason, but it doesn't matter. Right now, we're just looking at it if it goes 
to the upward trend of elite level. So you're talking about a major jump. You're talking about 100 spots, essentially, that it jumps in rankings. Well, first off, the likelihood of that happening is pretty dadgum slim. Yeah, I mean, because we've talked about it. There's only so many limitations. However, because of the transfer portal and how it's just changed the entire game and changed everything, it can make it to where your defense or just really any unit in general can jump at such a rapid rate from one year to the next. And Arkansas is in a position to where their defense can, in theory, jump a significant amount in one year because of the transfer portal. If you think about who Arkansas has brought in to address some of the issues, they have, in my opinion, better defensive line. Uh, I think Jeff Code is great. I think Landon Jackson's great. Uh, I, you know, I think they got plenty of depth there on the inside. They got experienced guys, bona fide SEC players. Because of that fact, it's going to be better and and, and much better. And, and even the linebackers, I know you lost Drew Sanders, but I still think Chris Poupal is great. I still think the guys you added into the portal are, are going to be significant. Uh, in fact, I, w- I wanted to say that one of the, the linebackers, and of course his name just escaped me, I should have brought the roster, uh, but the linebacker they got from a transfer from uh, actually South Florida, who was one, actually, if I don't, if I remember correctly, he was like one of the first transfers to come in for Arkansas. Uh, so, uh, which was big to just have that kind of starting with it. But as far as uh, the, we'll, we'll go to the class and just look at the transfers and everything too. So make sure I don't miss out on anybody. Uh, so yeah, the transfers uh, on the defensive side of the ball, at least. Uh, you got Keon Stewart, who came from TCU. You got also A.J. Bra- uh, Braithwaite, who was from Western Kentucky at a safety position. Kelvin Rose from Louisiana Tech as a defensive lineman. Jaheim Thomas, that's, the, that's one of the ones I was thinking of, of Cincinnati, transferred in. Um, 6'4", 245. And he was, he was the one I was thinking of that actually was rated pretty high as far as uh, the linebacker position according to Pro Football Focus. You got Anthony Booker from Maryland. You got uh, Jeff Cote, who, again, I'm excited about. The edge rusher from Missouri. You got Jaheim Singletary, who's a five-star player from Georgia. And then you have uh, Walcott from Baylor as a safety. Expected to do big things. And also Lorando Johnson, the really the, another great player in the cornerback position, uh, transferred from Baylor. Antonio Greer is a South Florida kid. He was one of the ones that was the first ones to, to hop on board. You got John Morgan, a transfer from Pittsburgh. A, a defense. So these are all just defensive players right there, and they, they built up the depth. And so I'm thinking that if you add in those guys with already the players you have on board, the safeties are going to be vastly improved. Uh, you're going to have more depth in the cornerback position. Like You'll make a significant jump based on that alone. You have better players this year than what you did last year, and you'll make significant strides with that. So, what if that happens? What if Arkansas has that defense that makes that significant jump and really puts everybody on notice? Well, it's as simple as this. This one might be actually the simplest question of the what-if Wednesday I've ever done. What if Arkansas has an elite defense? Well, if they do, they will be contending for a 10-win season. Maybe even more than that, if they have an elite defense. Because last season, offensively, you had the 15th best offense in the country. 15th best. The only ones in the SEC that were ahead of you were Tennessee at number one. You had Georgia, Ole Miss, and Alabama. Those are the only offenses that were better than you, statistically speaking, in the country, and in the, or at least in the SEC. I believe that the offense will be just as good as that, if not better, this season. Because you're still going to have KJ. You're going to have a better quarterback situation in case KJ goes out. you got the running back room all back. you got better tight ends. you got a great offensive line that's going to be in front of you. And I think the wide receivers are really going to show out. I think you're going to have just as good of an offense. So if you have an elite defense, you're talking about both categories being in the top 20, 25. We'll even say that. We'll give it or take that. Be a little nice with it. Arkansas is contending for an SEC title and possibly even 10 to 11 wins in the regular season. That's how big of a deal it is to have a great defense if Arkansas was able to pull that off. So, imagine that. Imagine how simple that is. Defense. 
Defense will be the difference in this year's team. Defense will be the difference in going six and six, seven and five, or nine and three and ten and two. I have zero issue with how the offense is going to go. I have full faith that this offense is going to be a great one once again. If the defense can just be good, it'll be like this. An average defense will get you to seven and five. A good defense will get you to eight and four, nine and three. An elite defense will get you from 10 and two and beyond. It's as simple as that. Again, I think the likelihood of that happening is very slim. With this transfer portal and with the schedule and with the changes and with the players that are coming in, I'm never going to rule anything out, especially with Razorback Athletics, because you just never know really what to expect. But folks, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available, and that's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. What you do is you just go on to LinkedIn and post. It's so easy. It's free. And for those of you who are somewhat social media savvy, they make it really easy for you to have the tools that you need. When it comes to the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile, you got the screening questions. They make it easy to focus on the candidates that you want to talk to with the right skills. And it's also why the small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality pro- hires versus their leading competitor. So since LinkedIn jobs wants to help you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster, post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, This was also a great little article that got put out, I thought at least interesting, on hogsports.com from Andrew Ellis. I had him on my radio show. Uh, to talk about uh, this particular topic. And, you know, summertime, you're coming up with any topics that uh, you can dive into and, and really discuss at, at nauseum. But uh, I encourage all of you to go over to hogsports.com and check it out for yourself. But he did the top 10 Arkansas football wins this past decade. Now, when I read that headline, I'm like, well, I a whole lot to choose from, <laughs> all things considered. Like, if you, if you did it just like in a 10 year space, it's like from, because it's taking it from 2013 to 2023. I guess, or I guess it would be 2012 to 2022. So that passed. But if you did like 2001 to 2011, you know how many iconic wins you'd have in that stretch? All of them, it seemed like. But still, it's fascinating to look at it. And, you know, the first thing that popped into my mind, honestly, was the Arkansas Ole Miss game 2015, the Hunter Henry Heave. I went out, I was thinking about that list. I'm like, okay, that probably is number one or number two. And the other one I thought about was when Arkansas beat Texas just two years ago in Fayetteville and just what it meant. Well, I'm going to find out that was actually uh, number two and number one. Number two being the Ole Miss game of 2015 and number one being the Texas game of 2021. Now, some may disagree with that. I think that's phenomenal. I think that's a great choice because you can look at just in the past 10 years, folks. Think about this. In the past 10 years, has there been a win that meant more, that felt better? than what you felt after that Arkansas-Texas game in 2021 in the past 10 years. There was not a Brett Bielma game where I felt that good after a game. Not one. Not one. And I think factors went into it, but I look at it as like, you know, Brett Bielma's teams always struggled in the beginning. You know, like remember that year in 2015? They went 7-5, and five, but they went 5-3 and three in conference play, but they, they lost to Texas Tech, they lost to Toledo, and lost to Texas A&M. Like, they started out at 1-3. and three. So you never really got the feeling, because even in those big wins that happened in 2015, you're like, oh, this is great, but as great as it is, we're still 4-3, and three. you know? It's like, it was always just meh after that. And then the same thing with, of course, I don't even bring up Chad Morris. I never had any good wins. So... I think that because of the Arkansas-Texas game of 2021 being so early in the season, uh, you're just coming off of the COVID year when no one could really go to the games. Uh, You've not had an atmosphere like that in Razorback Stadium 
she's eh, who, who who remembers 2016 probably and it just all came together where you not only had all those factors going into it but it was a night game on ESPN and you storm the field because you just beat the brakes off of a historic rival like the Texas Longhorns. That's number one to me. Like, I thought about it, and that's number one. Sure, the Ole Miss-Arkansas game of 2015 may be a better overall game as far as the back and forth. Uh, maybe you could even throw in the, uh, uh, the Arkansas-Mississippi State game of 2021 was good. The TCU-Arkansas game of 2016, the double overtime, that was a great game within itself. But when it comes down to it, I feel like that's the one. That's the one. It's, it's got to be that Texas game of 2021. I've, uh, I've always been very impressed by it and thinking back on the feelings that you have. And even the Texas A&M game, when you beat them two weeks later, starting off 4-0, it seems surreal. It's like, what? This Arkansas team hadn't won a conference game of meaning in years, but they were able to take care of business in those games. It's just a great feeling. Hopefully there's some more this year that can be able to add to the list of the past 10 years. But I didn't have any arguments with uh, Andrew Ellis, FoxSports.com. Made sense to me, but it's also kind of sad that that's all you got. Past decade for Razorback football has been the utmost worst. Like the 90s were bad for the most part, but at least you had the end of the 90s to help cap it off. It's been pretty bad, though. Hopefully that's all coming to an end. Folks, this episode is brought to you by Mark Hell. From Fayetteville to El Dorado and everywhere in between, Mark Hell has been helping Arkansas small business communities for over 30 years. Mark Hell is a global specialty insurer with a truly people first approach. To them, insurance is more than just a piece of paper, it's a promise to help you get back on your feet. We spend a third of our lives working, so on the job injuries can be expected. You work hard to build your business, so it's important to make sure that you and your employees have all the right insurance coverage. Whether you're new to the business or celebrating your 25th anniversary, whether you have one employee or a thousand, Markel aims to understand your workers' compensation insurance needs. Find a local independent agent to get a free workers' compensation insurance quote today at markelinsurance.com slash locked on. That's M-A-R-K-E-L insurance.com slash locked on. Markel, insuring America's small businesses since 1930. Insurance carrier coverage, dividends, and services availability may vary by state. Markell is a registered trademark of Markell Group Incorporated. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, A little baseball news, just to clear up some stuff. Uh, Arkansas baseball will be returning back to Globe Life. Those of you who remember, they played in Globe Life this past year for, I believe, is the College Baseball Showdown, I think is what it was called. Uh, but they're going back to Arlington, but it's for something different this time around, as the dates have been officially set on February 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Uh, Globe Life uh, Field in Arlington, and it's going to have a field that includes Oklahoma State, no Rock Regio. He's already dra- been drafted. Michigan. A unique opponent. I haven't really played them much, and they're kind of new to the baseball thing. And um, Oregon State. Sweet. That uh, just brings back memories. Anyways, the dates for the individual matchups will be announced at a later time. We just know that those are the three days it's going to be playing. And yes, folks, it's all three games are going to be streamed live on Flow Sports, so get over it. Just buy it and just do whatever. It's going to happen that way. But either way, uh, it's I guess it's called. I was looking at like, okay, so what is this called and everything? Um, but I guess it's by the REV Entertainment, which is the ones that did the one from this past year. And it's called the man. You know what? I'm, I'm I can't wait to meet this marketing and creative team that came up with this name. This is the title of this event. <laughs> The 2024 College Baseball Series. Yeah, that's it. Boy, paying the big bucks there. What a name. Like, you might as well have called it the college, the 2024 baseball game. <laughs> like, wow, really way to stand out. 
Way to stand out. You're telling me that there could be nothing else that you can name it? Like something about Arlington, something about Texas, something about, you know, the teams involved, like anything better than just the college baseball series? I don't know. It, it, I just, it, that is lame. <laughs> That's just all it is. It's just really lame. I was really disappointed by that. Uh, but anyways, those should be good matchups, and I look forward to it. I had a really good time this past year when I went down to Globe Live and watched those games. Um, I love the the ballpark. I love uh, what Arlington gives, and I love the fans that make the travel. And it's a good way of like in the beginning of baseball or bat or middle of basketball season, but the beginning of baseball season overlapping, having some fun with that too. Just depends on how the basketball season's going. But I'm excited about it. I think the matchups will be great. It seems like Arkansas and Oklahoma State are just destined to play each other in baseball often. Um, the Michigan and Oregon states are interesting within their own rights and for their own reasons. But I, again, we're, we're, we're way, way until that happens, but don't worry. If the second Arkansas football loses a game or the second that Arkansas basketball starts struggling in conference players, going to be, oh, yeah, when's baseball season. And then you'll be excited about that game. And that's a uh, epic, legendary, iconic, greatest baseball event to ever exist. The college baseball series. Still can't get over that on Flow Sports. It deserves Flow Sports with a name like that. Appreciate everybody listening in to the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.